Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Tracy Cook, and I'm the online media manager for ModernAnalyst.com, the premier community for business analysts. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar entitled From Requirements Analysis to Business Analysis. Today's featured speakers is Mark Monteleone, CBAP, PMP. This webinar will last approximately 60 minutes, including the question and answer session at the end. Please be sure to submit your questions in advance using the questions feature on the GoToWebinar software. And now I'd like to say thank you to ASPE Training for sponsoring this event. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Tracy Taylor to say a few words before we get started. Tracy? Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Um, so if you're not familiar with us, ASPE provides innovative custom solutions to help transform your enterprise and increase success within your organization through assessment, coaching, and training. Um, as the nation's leading professional development company, we do specialize in tailored solutions for all levels of the enterprise. To ensure that you receive the most effective transformation, we follow what we call our ACT model, which stands for Assess, Coach, and Train. Our assessments identify skills gaps within your organization to help us design a custom solution for you. When you need to help to reinforce learned skills, our expert coaches are there to increase the probability that those new skills become instinctive and reusable. Along with assessments and coaching, our training includes hands-on interactive exercises with real-world scenarios to guarantee your new skills can be implemented immediately. We have worked with many companies, including every single one of the Fortune 100. We'd love if you would come check us out and learn how we can help your organization evolve by visiting ASPETraining.com backslash about us, all one word. So that's it for me, Tracy. I'll pass things over to Mark Monteleone to get us started. Okay, thank you very much, Tracy. Uh, this is Mark Monteleone. Uh, I want to thank you for attending and registering for uh, this webinar. Uh, what you see in front of you is an abstract of the things that we're going to be talking about. I'm not going to go through all the details of this. It was on the uh, registration information. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get into some of the uh, material um, and also introduce myself. I'm an independent consultant. I have even written a book. I have several articles that I have uh, published in various different uh, journals including Modern Analyst. Um, yes, I'm a graduate of Texas A&M. I am an Aggie. I'm here in Houston, Texas, which, by the way, the weather here today is bright and sunny and approaching 96 degrees. We could break a record today. Yes, I do have a number of certifications. Um, and well, that's a little bit of a summary, okay, of myself. Uh, let's uh, also mention that I'll be using a uh, laser beam in, uh, in this presentation. Hopefully you can see it on the screen here. So every once in a while, if I want to point something out, I'll be using that laser beam. Okay, first, let's talk about our agenda. This is a mind map of the agenda. And during this whole presentation, I'll be zooming in in different pieces of this agenda. Uh, so you'll get to see it several times, uh, and it, we're going to be talking about various different things about having a scenario, okay, of, oh, let's say you as a business analyst and meeting an executive in an elevator. Uh, so we'll go through that scenario first. Uh, we'll then talk a bit about business an uh, analysis, and as a business analyst, what are the various components of the things that we're responsible for? Uh, and uh, then revisit, okay, then revisit the, um, uh, the actual elevator uh, scenario. So we'll say, say here, let's um, see if I can do my, um, there we go. Therefore, we're going to be talking about this one first. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go back a slide. There we go. There we are. Uh, so we're going to be talking about this portion first of the, um, mind map. We'll then take a look at uh, the next portion, which is ooh, a lot of the meat here of the, uh, of the webinar. And then finally, re go back and revisit okay, the, um, the actual scenario and how we would, say, change it. Um, 
from, as it says here in the title of this presentation, is from being a requirements analyst to a business analyst. I want you to think about that as we go through the material. Ask yourself, uh, am I focused on requirements only? Or yes, uh, I also focus on benefits because that's what it's all about in terms of the business. Okay, so let's focus first on the actual portion of the elevator space. And you'll see here what the, one of the first things we're going to do is actually talk about having a question posed to us by an executive in the elevator, uh, what our answer might be, uh, depending on what your focus is for your particular job. Um, and I'm going to guess that it's probably requirements. But then afterwards, okay, we have a, a lesson to think about, well, did we do well in that conversation? Uh, what was the interest of the uh, executive? And then make some observations, okay, in terms of uh, how we could have made things go better. Okay, so with that, let's talk about the elevator speech. It is a fortuitous meeting or something that is not planned. Uh, with someone of importance, let's say, in your company. Um, having a brief uh, encounter and engaging in a conversation, we have an opportunity to influence that person uh, and make perhaps maybe some profound statement about that, uh, the project that you're working on. So, for example, let's say you're a BA, you walk into an elevator, you're joined by an executive, and suddenly the executive asks you, well, so, what are you working these days? Well, you didn't expect this, although maybe it might be a good idea to talk to your, let's say in the mirror maybe, and ask yourself, gee, what, what would be my response? Well, here's a typical response of a business analyst, and this could be whether you're in the private or the public sector. Um, you'll notice here that first, the First title here is, this is, well, I'm working, okay, I'm working on a project that is providing new and enhanced features to our customers or, say, constituents. Today, we have customers that can only obtain information by accessing our service center. Um, but this project, right, we're working on, we're going to provide this website so that they can get direct access to our order database. And with that, Wow, we're going to have features that they'll be able to uh, add accounts and change accounts on various different orders so they won't have to call our service center any longer. And then, of course, the executive, when the elevator finally meets to the floor that he or she needs to get on, says, great, keep up the good work. Okay, now, after you have an encounter like that, you may then ask yourself a question, wow, did I know my audience? What was appropriate for this particular audience uh, in terms of style and format and tone, uh, also time, frequency, and language? But in particular, right, as it uh, says here, right, executives are probably more interested in business benefits more than solution requirements. So you should ask yourself the question, wow, is my, my focus only on the solution requirements, but what about the business benefits? Why are we doing this project? And is that more of a concern of, say, an executive, of what money is going to be saved or what money is going to come now? There's new revenue. Uh, maybe there's some compliance issues. Who knows? But so you have to ask yourself here, okay, in this second question, uh, do I, as a business analyst, know the business benefits of my project work? I'm very busy with requirements, but do I know what the benefits are and how those things can change? How do I associate these requirements with benefits and what, what benefits and management skills do I need in order to do this? Let me just say that uh, we'll talk a bit about traceability here because that's what we do in requirements. We have traceability from one level of requirements to the next. And benefit management is using those same sort of uh, type of skills. All right, so let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. Notice it's, I have here, it says that most business analysts, and I'm, I have this opinion, 
in that over 15 years of teaching various different business analysis courses and also some project management courses, um, that most business analysts elicit requirements. That's their main task. In fact, it might be their only task. All right. So they're not typically involved okay, in the development of a business case. This has been my experience over 15 years. They're more focused on project success, okay, which of course is necessary, right, in terms of requirements management. Uh, we, as business analysts, respond, okay, by describing our, uh, any questions from us in terms of features of a solution that's being built. And then, of course, we seldom, unfortunately, mention the association of business benefits. Remember who you're talking to. Remember who the audience is. Well, what I'm suggesting here in this webinar is that we need to be more business focused. That is, uh, not just project success, but business success. Focus on the benefits, right? Uh, benefits management to why are we doing this project in the first place. We want to be able to conduct benefits mapping. This is that traceability that I mentioned to you, right? Similar to, as it says here, requirements traceability, uh, and cite the impact of the business case if and when requirements change. And as we all know, yes, requirements change, no matter how good your plan is. Okay, so we probably want to be more involved with something called a business case. What we're going to do now in this agenda is I'm going to go to this part. You'll see the arrow pointing to, gosh, a lot of different uh, streams here where we'll be talking about the various different aspects of being a business analyst. And I'm going to focus on business benefits. I'm also going to relate that to requirements management and also what happens when things change. So keep in mind, right, the title of this webinar is going from a requirements analyst to a business analyst. Okay, well, what should be our concerns? Well, let's take a look at this. Business analysis is composed of typically four components. You may have worked on maybe two or three of these. Perhaps maybe if you've been in the business for a long time, you've done all four. Uh, you'll notice that the the one on top here is called strategic analysis, and that particular component of business analyst, being a business analyst, is all about understanding the direction that your company is going in, what are their objectives, okay? And but then we have at the bottom, you'll notice something called enterprise analysis. Well, enterprise analysis is all about how do we do this. How do we accomplish this strategic plan of our company? Well, the one on the right there, you'll see, right? The one on the right is called requirements management. We are probably pretty familiar with that because when we get on a project and they want to build some sort of product or service, we talk to stakeholders, we engage, we elicit requirements. But then there's this other piece on the other side benefits management. Benefits management gets to the point of, well, hopefully we're doing this to make our company more profitable, or certainly if you're in the public sector, that you're making your constituents happier with the services that you're providing. What's the benefit? Okay, so those are the four. There is a couple of certifications, and I thought it might be good just to oh, note this before we get into the actual components. Notice we have here Project Management Institute, and then on the other side, on the right-hand side, we have the International Institute of Business Analysis. Both of these organizations offer certifications in business analysis, but I want you to make sure that at least you are aware, if I look at the one from PMI, okay, that they're very focused on requirements management, and they should be, because they're worried about projects being successful. However, on the other side is the International Institute of Business Analysis, and you can see their certification is much more comprehensive and covers those four areas that I mentioned to you. My only purpose here of showing this to you is I wanted to make sure that you are at least aware if you're going for a certification 
that one covers all four areas where the other one covers one, which is probably one of the most dominant ones, okay, for your, your business. All right, I'm gonna go now to the first part of the agenda in terms of business analysis. We're gonna have a slide on strategic analysis. We're gonna look at the goals and objectives. We're then gonna see, well, how is this done through enterprise analysis? And we call this the architecture and how we achieve those goals and objectives. And we just have a very simple slide here. Uh, you'll see that we've defined that really strategic analysis is all about the mission and vision. What does your company do today? What does it want to do in the future? What are the goals? And specifically, what are the objectives that support those goals? At the same time, as a business analyst, you want to be involved with, say, enterprise analysis was how do we, notice the word how there, uh, how do we ensure that we are, in fact, focused on our direction Okay, and we do that typically, as it says here, through organizational components, let's say functional departments, and interactions between them. All right, so those are the uh, two top ones that we talked about before, strategic analysis, focus on direction, and then, of course, business architecture. How do we get it done? Well, if we look at the next slide, and there's a lot on this one, right? Business analysis includes, as it says, the benefits management, and that benefits management is very heavily involved in doing a business case uh, where we propose initiatives, and those initiatives are backed up by some sort of description and some sort of cost business analysis uh, to justify the initiative or the project that we're working on. Uh, um, you'll notice here that there is a particular portion that we'll, uh, we'll talk about. Okay, called, uh, oops, let's go back to that slide, uh, called benef Benefits Management. Okay, so we'll talk about that. And then you'll see that, yes, uh, uh, later on we'll look at Requirements Management, but then also talk about the Change Management, because in Change Management, all those things that we said in business cases and requirements changes, they change. And then we have to look at various different corrective actions. Okay, so the other two portions we talked about was besides strategic analysis and enterprise analysis was benefits management, which is focused on a business case. And you'll notice here that this is where we talk about the financials, okay, the cost benefit analysis of the initiative that we're working on. And of course, justifying it to become a project. Uh, also, we have requirements management. Now, this area we're probably very familiar in, and most business analysts, this is where they start. They go on to a project, they interview various different uh, stakeholders, and they come up with solution requirements. And if you think about it, this is why most business analysts have this tendency of, when you ask me about my project, I talk about solution requirements rather than benefits management of the project. So think about that while we go through this presentation. What we want to do is to reach out. Here are the other three components, right? We talked about the strategic, we talked about enterprise analysis, yes, and we talked about requirements, but then there's this other portion out here. And again, as I said, it's been my experience over the past 15 years in teaching a number of business analyst courses, not a lot of them are involved with business management or the development of a business case. And what I'm proposing here is, you may want to think about this in terms of your career, of expanding your particular skills. So let's talk more about benefits management. It involves having a business case, and typically it's two components, a description, okay, and as it says there, right, economics. There is something called a business or cost benefits analysis, which is internal to the initiative, okay, with all its economics. And then in addition to that financial analysis, which is all about comparing your particular project or initiative to someone else's. Why would you get the money to execute your project rather than 
that funding going to someone else. So there's some very important pieces here that I would recommend that you be aware of and change that conversation with the executive. Notice here we talk about benefits mapping requirements, right, to benefits, right? So if I know the requirement, I should be able to trace it, just like traceability, to trace it back to the benefit and its relationship with change management. Because as I said before, all things change, no matter how good you're a, a planner, right? So the business case may change change the requirements that may change and typically results in needing okay to update the benefits just think about this question who is best to understand the requirements I'm going to give you an answer yes the business analyst now ask the question is who is best to understand what benefits may have changed think about that okay here's a uh, pictorial just to say what goes into the in, the initiative of the business case and you can see that there's a description on the left hand side and it talks about the strategic plan and a value proposition which is as a, uh, a nice uh, word or term to use why do people buy our products uh, it talks about program uh, dependency perhaps your particular initiative supports some other set of projects uh, also compliance. So these are all things that go into the description in addition to risk with all its various sources in terms of, submit, of assumptions all the way down to resistance. Also the impact, right? Is there an impact to employees down to perhaps uh, processes, customers, and certainly technology used in your company? But that's just the description. Then comes the economics. In other words, you've got to justify spending money. And you'll notice here something called an income stream. Okay, so if we uh, take a look at the income stream here, there's a lot of different parts to it in terms of the initial capital that's invested, uh, your expenses, your savings, and certainly your income. And once that data is collected, and it may go on for maybe one to five years, perhaps, maybe longer, right? You then need to do a cost-benefit analysis. And you'll notice there are various, right, various indicators of how well this project is doing. And from this information, and let me go back to it, that's, uh, here we go. Um, you could look at the payback period of your project, the uh, return on investment, uh, net present value. There are several different um, indicators, okay, that you should become familiar with uh, so that you can justify your project, okay, versus, say, someone else's. And now that I've mentioned that, you'll notice here at the bottom, which is a little bit different color, is the financial analysis. Lots of people don't understand, perhaps are not aware, that to get funding for a project, it is competitive. That means the number of projects are looked at, let's say, gosh, maybe 50 projects. Well, we don't just hand out the money because you're first in line. No, we hand out the money that is executives approve of funding based on a comparison of economics and, of course, the description of the initiative. Now. We're going to go into a little bit more of this cost-benefit analysis because that's a that's a big deal. Okay, with this. Uh, so let me then go now to the first thing that's in that is something called an income stream. We talked about. This is where we're going to collect a lot of information as to well, what sort of an initial capital investment do we need? You'll see that on this particular cutout of a spreadsheet, uh, and. Are we, uh, what are the different activities that we're going to have from the first year all the way down, let's say, to year five? And you can see there's a lot of numbers here, okay, that we have to collect to say, well, what's the expense of the project the first year, second year, third year? What income are we expecting to come in from one year to the next year? And then we add them up as what we call a, a net, okay? So we may do that. And then, of course, uh, again, let me go back to that slide. Okay, 
uh, you'll see that we add them up to something called a net, uh, and then what we call a cumulative net. And we can then start doing various different calculations from this income stream. Now, when we get to the income stream, be very frank here, there's a lot of math. And I know some of us aren't real thrilled with mathematical jobs, okay? Uh, um, doing a description, okay, sounds pretty good in terms of the business case, but there's also these economics. I'll be very candid with you. It's very important to understand the cost-benefit analysis, that is, how much money are we saving, how much money are we spending, because that's what management is very interested in. What are the benefits? How much revenue are you bringing into the company? How much are we going out? And can you give me some indications of whether this is a very profitable project versus another project? So we're now gonna get into the actual measurements. I'm gonna give you a description on the next two slides of these various indicators. And then I'm gonna show you a slide of a summary of all of them. And you may at some point in time when go back to the go back to modern analyst and get a copy of this deck and print them out because it's a fairly good summary. You'll notice on the very first one we have here payback period. Okay, payback period. How long do I have to wait to if I give you an investment, let's say of a hundred dollars, when am I gonna see that hundred dollars again? Is it a year, two years, three years? Same thing with return on investment. Okay, it may uh, last a whole year, your particular project. Uh, we're not gonna discount the money, okay, because it's all during the same year. But then there's something called net present value. And this is uh, for a multiple year project over a period of time. And as a result, we have to discount money because a dollar today isn't worth the same thing as the dollar tomorrow in terms of next year or the year after that, or the year after that. So here's three different ways I can evaluate economically, okay, doing the cost benefit analysis of the initiative I'm working on. Uh, and you can see some of these functions are available to you in Excel, and there are some anomalies associated with, uh, with them that I've uh, indicated on the slide. I'm going to go to the next slide, which has two, hmm, maybe three here, um, other indicators of measurements of how well economically your project is doing. Notice one is called the benefit cost ratio. And in this one, right, where we find out, well, how much are we saving? What sort of revenue is coming in? And gee, how much is this all costing me, at least in the initial years or years? And you can see here that we can then come up with this ratio. Just to give you an example, if the ratio is one, you broke even. Well, that's nice, but gee, we would have liked to have made some money too. And if you're executive, you're probably interested in that. But let's say if the ratio is two or three, oh, we doubled our money. Oh, we tripled our money. That's a good sign that that may be a project I'm interested in. But there's also something called internal rate of return. That's the next bullet you'll see on this slide. And it talks about how to compare this project with some expectations of management. You'll notice there's something on this slide called the hurdle rate. Okay, so if I can, you go to, uh, oh, the second to the last bottom one there. Okay, I put my cursor on that, the hurdle rate. And that's some expectations that your executive may have of, okay, of your project bringing together, let's say, a certain percentage of uh, profit. So in other words, your executive may say, I'll look at your project or your initiative, but it better bring me back at least 20% profit or 40%. Okay, depending on what sort of business you're in. And that's what these calculations are about, the internal rate of return. And again, there's some anomalies with that. And there's also something called at the very last uh, statement on there, the modified internal rate of return. If you use these, 
I suggest that you look them up on the internet and get more of a complete understanding. Uh, certainly you can um, um, ask uh, oh, how some people may call them the, uh, I guess, a very experienced uh, financial analyst, okay, in your particular company. Uh, or, okay, certainly you could uh, send me an email, okay, if, uh, if you want some more details on these particular items. But one of the things I wanted to do for you, okay, is this summary. And this is the slide that I think you may want to print out. This is the slide that you asked for the whole deck, and I want this particular slide because it talks about all the economic indicators, how things are calculated, but it also gives you their strengths, their weaknesses, and their sensitivities. Okay, so take a look at each of these in terms of the economic, the cost-benefit analysis. So yes, we write up a business case. Yes, we come up with a description of what we're trying to do, but then we also have to deal with the numbers, and this is how we do that. Now, I'm gonna go here to the next slide to talk about the next portion of this which is called financial analysis you may recall i said remember it's a competitive environment we don't just put up a project and yes we get funding for it oh no we have to compare our initiative with someone else's initiative and your company your executives may be looking at gosh 50 initiatives every year trying to determine which one do you fund this is called a comparative analysis tool, and all it does is compare one project to the next. So you see on the very top of this matrix, it has initiative A, B, C, and D, and then there's a column, the very first column, and we have the same initiatives there, A, B, C, and D, and we compare two at a time. And if you look at, let's say, this intersection, okay, so let's, uh, bring this up here to this intersection right here, I've compared initiative A with initiative B. Now, okay, if I can do that, let's uh, go back. Okay, there we are. Um, and I found that I like initiative A better. And on the next comparison with A with C, I still liked A better. And then I compare it with D, but on that particular occurrence with those two projects, I like D better. Now, when I do that comparison, I look at the description and I look at the cost-benefit ratio with all those different economic indicators that I mentioned to him. And we draw, have a discussion, and then we finally make a judgment as to which one benefits the company more. And then if you, you come out, let's say, more times uh, as, the, as the winner, uh, then let's say, well, in this case, case here the winner is it looks like uh, gosh um, a came up as a frequency of two that is that they like that uh, a twice but boy D we like that one three times so it looks like D gets the money first then comes the initiative a then B and if there's any money left and there might not be in terms of funding projects okay C may or may not get funded now there's some other other mechanics in here in terms of discretionary and non-discretionary projects, but I focused here on this webinar on really your discretionary projects. That is, there are optional investments. Anyway, just to make sure, we do a description. I have a economic analysis. I do that for a project, and then finally I compare projects okay, through something called financial analysis, okay, through this process. All right, now, I said in terms of requirements traceability, and I decided to use a baseball analogy here, if you have been eliciting requirements for some time, you know that there are different levels of requirements. We start with business needs, and I have that here at home plate, okay, for this baseball analogy. But then we go to, well, what are the, in the same direction of the business needs, what are the stakeholder requirements? And then what are the solution requirements? And as we go through that, 
we have to make sure in terms of traceability that the stakeholder requirements support the business needs and the solution requirements support the stakeholder requirements and then all the way down to perhaps having some transition requirements. And you can see there on the slide the words the business needs to, right, needs to support the stakeholder requirements. And then the stakeholder requirements certainly are going to support the solution requirements and on down to transition. This is what we do today for requirements um, traceability. Well, you do the same thing with benefits, right? It's called benefits mapping. You look at the business values. What are we going to get out of this in terms of revenue or cost savings, whatever that may be, right? And this benefit mapping, right, is the business tool, okay, for ensuring requirements link to their potential business value. Most important, are we getting an increase from revenue? Are we increasing customer satisfaction? Are we decreasing our liabilities, our risk? And here's where we focus on the business success, okay, if that's achieved when realizing these, business, uh, these benefits. In fact, I can tell you that and I find this most unfortunate in many different companies, they focus so much on project success that they declare victory and then they move on to the next project without really confirming the business success of why we did this project anyway. The objective is not just a project success, but a business success. So this is the same sort of mapping or same sort of traceability that we do with requirements. We'd look to see if I'm doing something for a stakeholder, I'm giving them a capability, I'm doing something to ensure that that capability is supported by a solution. I should be able to relate those to the actual business values. And this really comes into uh, uh, some importance when things change. There is a wave of change, of course. No matter what initiative you work on, your strategic plan may change your value proposition, maybe your customers don't like your products anymore or your services. There might be some new dependencies on your particular initiative. And maybe, gosh, maybe the government has decided to change some laws, whether it be state, federal, or um, you know, local laws, that things need to change with your project. And then, of course, you have to look at, well, what assumptions have we made? These are the, the sources of risk. What constraints do we have? We might have new constraints. Do we have new dependencies? All of these things need to be examined, okay, during the project. And notice the fourth one, and that one unfortunately has been left out a lot. It is a risk in that people don't like change. You will find out if people don't understand the urgency of your particular project of why we need that to be implemented, uh, it could be one of the biggest risks that you have on the project. Okay, so we have to uh, be aware of that. And with our project case, certainly if the uh, our business case, if, if the strategy changes, well, the direction that we're coming from in this um, in this particular project may no longer be valid. Uh, perhaps maybe also with the competitiveness of comparing projects, other projects would have been more favorable. So we have to keep that in mind. Solution requirements may change. Specific benefits may no longer be valuable. Uh, gosh, cost uh, benefits analysis is no longer favorable. Things change and we need not only to understand the requirements, but the benefits that in fact, the corrective action to our initiative may in fact be so severe, it could mean maybe we ought to cancel this project. We can't just continue to do it if it's not in line with the strategic direction. And certainly the benefits aren't there anymore. Some things to think about. All right. so. You work as a business analyst together with your project manager. And let me just say that you are probably the one that will know the requirements best. And if you're involved with the business case, you will know the benefits very well. And if things change, some benefits may no longer be valid. 
very important to think about. Okay, so let's go back to the elevator. We looked at the first uh, mind map with these elevators and also he over here with uh, uh, all the various different aspects of components of business analysis. And we focus on business, right, the actual benefits management part. You'll notice on this particular mapping that there are these dotted lines. Let me just sort of point them out here that you'll see. And the reason that I put those on the mind map is that they show you where to get the information. In other words, if I'm going to come up with goals and objectives, where do I get the information? And that's what these lines show you, okay, these, uh, these links. So if I do this analysis on the right-hand side, they should link to my goals and objectives over in my elevator speech. So let's take a look. You'll notice here, here's a little bit more of a zoom in on them. We're going to look at, certainly, let me uh, even zoom in even further. We have the question that the executive is going to ask us. How are you doing? What are you doing? What are you working on? What's our answer? But now in terms of benefits and objectives, particularly smart objectives. And as I showed you on that mind map, I showed you the links to those. Now let's just talk about the SMART format and coming up with our objectives for our project. So here we are, yep, we're in the elevator, here comes the executive, and we're asked the question. But now we're familiar, okay, with benefits management. And if we use the, fourth, uh, the, the SMART format, you'll notice here, right, we have specific, what are we doing, what are the issues, where's our info source, the business case, particularly in its description. Measurements, well, there's lots of different measurements in our business case, and in fact, the cost-benefit analysis indicator will give us at least five, perhaps six indicators that we can talk about of our particular project. Also, is it achievable, and we should have our support from stakeholders, and this should be in our business case description. Is it relevant, okay? Is it part of our strategic plan, which is something of great importance to an executive? And then, of course, time bound. When are we gonna get this done? Is it one year, two years, or several years? And certainly we can look at our income stream in our business case for those answers. Okay, now, what would be our answer to the executive? Think about this, and think about what the executive is thinking. Your response as to, well, what you're working on. Your response is now, I'm working on a global opportunity that is adding $20 million in revenue. Let me just say, once you say that, you've got somebody's attention, right? To the business, and then we're doing this in the next three years, and this work is aligned with our strategic plan and confirmed by our stakeholders. Or your response might be, if you look at the, the second bullet, I'm working on a local issue that is saving the business $10 million over the next five years. This work is aligned with our strategic plan and confirmed with our stakeholders. Or the last one here, I'm working on a statewide issue that is expected to increase constituent satisfaction from a survey of four, say, well, it's our present survey, but up to nine. And we're gonna do this by the end of the year. The team is enhancing the usability of our public products and services uh, and making sure that they're aligned with the stated direction that has been issued by our elected or uh, appointed officials. So you can see that the answers here are focused on benefits, not requirements. Know your audience, as I said. Let's take a look at just one more, right? I'm working on a regional compliance issue that is ensuring that the business will avoid, in case of avoiding about $5 million in U.S. government fines, possible litigation, even incarceration. Oh, you can get a lot of attention with that word. Um, 
And by being aligned with these new, say, federal state laws, perhaps even local, that's going to be effective, say, next year. This work is aligned with our executive policy to always be in compliance with existing laws. Okay, so the th things that I think that uh, you need to look from just looking at this scenario is that the, resp the BA response is now citing the business benefits to the executive to gain the executive's interest. And may now you, you may even be invited uh, maybe to the executive's office for a more of extended conversation because they want to know where all this revenue is coming from and all the savings. They probably would not ask you about features of the product, but more about what are you doing for the business. Okay. This is what some questions that I would pose to you to think about, you as a business analyst. What are my current responsibilities? Am I collecting, I'll use the word, eliciting requirements? Am I involved with any sort of benefits? Uh, what about looking at the strategic direction of the company itself, or for that matter, the enterprise architecture to achieve that direction? Does my career path as a business analyst include benefits management? Do I aspire to include benefits management as my job as a business analyst? And then most important, how do I acquire these skills? And I, I'll be very frank, I can tell you, it's been my experience in many different firms that building a business case, writing it up in the description, and in particular, the cost benefit analysis and financial analysis, that the firm doesn't provide training in that area. And that's very unfortunate. In other words, you got it from uh, maybe the school that you went to, or maybe you were able to acquire training from some other place. But perhaps what you should do first is sit down with your supervisor. Hey, what's the expectations for my job here as a business analyst? In fact, what is a business analyst, you might ask? Do we have a good definition of that? And what are the skills that I will be rated on? Good questions to ask. Now, you may decide, I don't want to get involved with this economic business. The math sort of uh, is not my cup of tea, and that's okay. But do it in terms of a conscious decision for your career. Okay, so yes, you'll probably start with, with eliciting requirements, but remember there are all these other aspects, okay, you should consider. Talk to your boss. Okay, so Remember, the purpose of this particular seminar was from requirements analyst to benefits analyst. You were able to get a recording of this presentation and also the slide deck uh, from Modern Analyst. Um, let me just say that uh, I want to thank all the folks at Modern Analyst for giving me this opportunity to have this conversation with you. And in particular, I want to certainly thank uh, the sponsor. Let me just say that uh, if we look at the next slide, I have a number of references here that are available on the internet. And I want to say again, one more time, I want to thank uh, the sponsor. Um, Tracy, you might have a few things you'd like to say. Sure. Thank you, Mark. Um, again, if you're not familiar with ASPE, we are the nation's leading professional development company specializing in assessing, training, coaching, and consulting SDLC professionals and teams within all levels of the enterprise. But it doesn't end there. Um, we are focused on providing you with quality content to enrich and enforce the skills learned and keep you ahead of the curve when it comes to trends in your industry, emerging technologies, and more. Uh, we do have an extensive free learning library, including white papers, webinars, videos, and podcasts, such as our current podcast, The BA Revolution. So if you did enjoy today's webinar, I think you'll probably enjoy some of the resources included on this slide. I've gone ahead and included links to two of our most recent white papers, as well as some links to a few of our most popular training courses. Um, we do have an entire curriculum designed for business analysts, including foundation classes, certification programs, 
modeling and architecture courses, specialty classes, and specific to today's web seminar requirements courses. Um, so please go ahead and click over and check us out. Um, we'd love it if you would. And I also think it's time for questions. So I'll go ahead and pass things over to Tracy, Chris, and Mark. And thank you, Tracy. Uh, Mark, what a great presentation so far. We're now going to begin answering questions. And as a reminder, you can type your questions still into the questions pane of the attendee control panel. And Mark, our first question is from Raj. Raj asks, for your role as requirements analysis, how do you make the leap to taking the first step towards tracing changes to business benefit? Okay, that's, that's, let me just say it's an excellent question. I would first, number one, I would sit down with my supervisor and ask, what's your expectations of this job called a business analyst? In fact, do we have a formal definition of it? And it might be that the supervisor's opinion says, well, you, you elicit requirements for various different software, for maybe process uh, improvements, whatever that may be. But then you should engage in a conversation, well, what about the benefits to the company for doing all this? Is that included in my repertoire? And how do I obtain the skills to do that well? This is a good conversation to have. First of all, to understand I'm gonna be rated and do I know what I'm gonna be rated on? And certainly if it's not just requirements uh, analysis or, or uh, requirements um, uh, elicitation, that the first thing I gotta make sure of is that I have the right skills to branch out into those other areas like benefits. What I would say today, in a couple of the slides here that I showed, is today you should be using something called traceability, and you should be then be able to say that as I elicit various different levels of requirements, I'm making sure that they support each other. And that's important to maintain your scope of your particular analysis, okay, or your project. Then from there is to say, well, if I have this requirement, what benefits does it give to me? And I can start the same sort of process, the same sort of linkage, that if I provide this requirement, I get this benefit from it. And if I do this, I get this benefit from it. So it's the same sort of mapping, okay, that you've done before. Um, but I would start with that conversation to understand my position here. What am I supposed to be doing? And does it include these other areas of business analysis? And with that, where do I get the training to do it? And it may be offered within the company or it may not. But that's a good place to start. Uh, let me just say that, you know, since you, it's sort of a broad question that you ask, uh, I'm going to in, invite Tracy from ASPE. Um, do you all do anything uh, or, or would accept a, a challenge of, uh, of uh, providing some training in terms of uh, benefits mapping or benefits management, Tracy? We do. Um, if you go to ASPTraining.com and then go over to our business analysis curriculum, we've got let me see if I can find something specific to your question. Uh, let's see here. If you look underneath requirements courses, we've got multiple options for modeling and mapping. Um, so again, that's ASPTraining.com, and then you'll just navigate over to our business analysis curriculum page, and you can see all of the options available there. Most of these classes are going to be two- to three-day classes. There are a couple five-day options there. They're offered uh, public in-class options, live online, and then you can also bring these classes um, on-site and have them delivered privately. And with that option, we can custom tailor these courses based on what your team needs. Okay, thank you very much, Tracy. Um, do we have another question? 
Thank you, Mark. We do. Our next question comes from Ali. And is there a break, is there a difference between the payback period and the break even point? Um, there is, and I'm going to um, I'm going to go in terms of the slides. I'm going to go back some to uh, to that particular slide because it's a good summary. Let's uh, move along here and take a look at that particular slide. Okay, here we are. If you think about it, you said, what's the difference between the payback period and the break-even period? They're essentially the same, but they are some interesting, how you say, anomalies here that you gotta be careful with. First of all, it shows in terms of strength. Okay, if you'll, if you'll notice uh, in terms of the uh, strength, let's see if I can put my little cursor here. Here's my, you probably see my little cursor right under strength. And it says it shows how quickly the investment is going to be returned. And this can be used to compare a, a number of different projects. And your project will maybe w worth more, particularly if it's a cash strapped company, uh, if it comes in, well, let's say, two years rather than another project, let's say that it's four years. However, it does have some weakness. The weakness is, is the time value of money is not done in payback period. In other words, we don't discount the money. That's the way the calculation works. So that's something to remember, because when you say, well, is that the break, uh, break even period versus payback period? They're essentially the same, but we have to make sure we get our definitions down that we're not discounting money, okay? If you're gonna discount money, then it has to be a multiple year project, and then you're probably talking about something more like net present value. There is also a sensitivity, if you look across the, the row here, notice it says preferences three years. Most of your executives, in terms of they ask about payback period, there it's going to be, how you say, a good sign for your project if you go back and say it's three years. If it's longer than three years, uh, there could be some concern that it takes too long to recover the money. All right, so that's something to keep in mind and you might have a conversation of that with the executives. What's our expectation? What are we looking for? And that's why I listed these strengths, weaknesses, and sensitivities. And if you just say break even period, well, there's a lot to be implied there. Is that the same thing as payback period? Um, okay, the other thing to remember, uh, and this is interesting, if you look under weakness for payback period, it says the benefits beyond the payback period are not considered. In other words, once we, re we get to that payback period or a break even period, as you said, we don't look beyond that. And being very candid, there are some projects that go south, or how you say, or become losers uh, in the future years. So that's something that you may want to consider in terms of weakness of looking at payback period. Okay, Thanks. another question. Thanks, Mark. This is our last question, and uh, uh, Charlene asks, I have been pulled into so many projects where no business case exists and business hasn't even given it much thought. I find that when I ask business what their business case is, I am often pushing people's buttons in the wrong way. Mark, have you experienced this? And if so, how did you manage that situation? I have seen it uh, rarely. I, I can tell you, I've been, I'll use, I've been very lucky. And some of the firms that I've worked for, which were large corporations, uh, in particular, I can tell you in the oil business, they were very, very focused on economics. But there are some proprietary ships that you may be working for a small company that they don't do a cost benefit analysis, they don't do a financial analysis. And we fund projects based on, Hmm, how you say, I'll use this, gut feeling, okay, by the executives that uh, perhaps are the sole owners of a particular company. And they may have some very good judgment, okay, but 
you want to have a good decision, you got to have good information. It's it's called you know data analytics. Uh, if you want to be consistent in good decisions, uh, so it's um, it is difficult. I, I can tell you there was one company I remember here in the state of Texas um, that uh, they were quite how you say successful, and uh, they actually gave me a statement to say, well, we just fund any project that comes along. Ouch. You may be, how you say, investing in losers, okay, that really don't uh, give you, how you say, what you would like, or as they say, bang for the buck. Uh, that's a tough nut to crack, but I think that what you have to do is to do it in terms of not just the context of a particular project, but you say as a methodology as to how do we manage our money. We all have to recognize we only have so much money to invest in projects. It's competitive. We're going to look at 10 different projects and we want to make sure we're investing in the best one. We don't want to learn six months from now, we put it in the wrong place. So you, you have to have those conversations and I would not have it during the defense of a project. I'd have it as a general meeting as to what's our methodology of funding projects. Anyway, that's, a, I think, the best answer I can give you. Thank you, Mark. Um, and now that we're just up on the top of the hour, I'll just be closing the session. So, Mark, thank you for such a great presentation today. And we'd also like to thank ASPE Training for sponsoring today's webinar. Thank you for all for attending today's Modern Analyst webinar. And I'd like to remind everyone that today's webinar, along with the slides, will be archived at the modernanalyst.com website within a few business days. Thank you so much. This concludes today's event. Have a great day.